I'm Nick and welcome to this video on choosing and using microphones. This is part of a series and in today's video we're going to be having a look at basic types of microphone that you might be likely to encounter. So if you're thinking of buying a mic to start a live or a little studio setup, then this is a video for you. In future videos we're going to have a look at how to connect mics to your equipment and also how to position them to get the best out of them. Let's start off by looking at dynamic mics. So the dynamic mic, the term dynamic is just a generic term for the way that these mics work. We're not doing science today, so we're not going to talk about how the internals of any of these mics work, just how they work practically for you. These are the workhorses of live use, mostly. This is a Shure SM58. Uh, you'll often see them set up on stage for vocalists. They do have a use in the studio as well, and we'll come to that in just a little while. Dynamic mics are very rugged. I could probably drop this on the floor uh, and it wouldn't break it. I'm not gonna drop it, but it'd probably be okay. You'll find that you get use out of these, particularly if you've got maybe a really aggressive vocalist. They're good, for, when I say aggressive, I mean vocally aggressive, not physically aggressive. So they do have a use in the studio as well. Um, they are quite low sensitivity, so they don't do a great job of picking up sounds from a long way away. And they can tend to be a little bit noisy, a little bit hissy as well, if you use them in that way. But used close up, they're brilliant. Their address, how, we talk about how you address microphones. Good day to you, sir. Not like that. That's just about where you speak into them or where you position them to get the sound from an instrument. So these mics, they address to the front here, to this end. You might see people at weddings talking into them like this. They don't work very well like that because they're picking up the sound from here. So you should talk into them that way. And I'll talk about that for the other mics when we get there. Dynamics do have a use in the studio. Like I've said, they do get used for vocalists sometimes, for some vocalists. You might use them on guitar cabs or very loud sources, uh, snare drums and things like that because they will cope with a lot of sound level going in. So that's just a little bit about dynamic mics. If, budget-wise, if I only had budget for one microphone, and these things are fairly affordable, and I wanted a mic to use for both live and studio stuff at home, I might be tempted to get a dynamic. There are lots of other types other than the SM58 about. So go and have a look at some reviews online uh, and see if that's the mic for you. It could be. Let's move on and talk about large diaphragm condensers. Ooh. So this is a large diaphragm condenser. This one's a Rode NT2A. This one is addressed, remember the address thing, generally from the front here, from the front of the grill, so not like that. There are different address points on this mic which we'll deal with in another video because it has lots of switches on it that do things that we're not gonna discuss today. Large diaphragm condensers are a bit more delicate than dynamic mics. You don't necessarily wanna go around dropping them or chucking them around but they have a much greater sensitivity. So you can use them close on vocals and guitar cabs and other things like that, but you also can use them as a more distant mic for room miking, for example. You'll see them in the studio very often on vocals with a kind of pop shield thingy in between the vocalist and the mic. One thing about condenser mics, again, we're not gonna talk about the innards of the mic and how it works, but they do need almost always to be powered. And if you've got a sound desk anywhere or an audio interface already, you might see the word phantom or 48 volt, 48 plus or whatever on it. That is the power that you need to put into this microphone to make it work. These things have a multitude of uses, really in the studio more than live because they're so delicate. Uh, if I was gonna do a thing again, thinking about budget, if I was going to think about getting one mic for my little home studio, I would probably choose a large diaphragm condenser because they can be used in so many different ways. Instruments, vocals, all the rest of it. Let's move on to small diaphragm condensers. So this is a small diaphragm condenser. This one's a Neumann KM184. You see them in studios a lot. They get used more on instruments than vocals. There are occasions where they get used on vocals for albums, uh, but it's much, much less common. They pick up the transient bit, the top end of the sound, that's uh, more easily sometimes than the larger diaphragm because this smaller diaphragm moves. I said I wasn't gonna do science. Didn't I, okay, I'm not going to do science. They get used on instruments a lot. They really excel on acoustic instruments and they also, because they can withstand slightly higher sound levels, sometimes you see them as things like overheads on drum kits, so they're really useful for that as well. 
uh, they can have a little bit more noise, a little bit more self noise to them, so they can be a little bit hissier. They're less well used, the common types, they're less well used as room mics. Large diaphragms are probably a better bet for that. If I was going to buy one mic for my studio, it probably wouldn't be a small diaphragm condenser. I'd probably go, like I said, with the large diaphragm first, but then to add these later for instrument use is really, really common kind of thing and really useful thing to do. So that's small diaphragm condensers. There are other mic types about, uh, including, you might hear things about ribbon mics and boundary mics and lapel mics and stereo mics. If you're starting out thinking about buying a microphone, I would ignore all of those just to start with. There are lots of things that you kind of need to know about how to use them. So there's one more mic type that I'd like to speak to you about, which is the USB mic. And the USB mic, that's what I'm using to record the sound for this video. This one's an AKG Lyra. They've come on lots in the last few years. They didn't used to sound great, but they do sound a lot, lot better now. You'll see them used for podcasting and other stuff, but they can have, not really a live use, but they can have a kind of studio use, I guess, which is that if you have a USB mic and a laptop and a cable, then you've got a tiny little mini, very mobile recording setup, and I think they're absolutely brilliant for that. Would I use this for making uh, really critical frontline album tracks like vocals? Probably not. I'd probably use one of these kind of mics, something something else for that. But if again, if you're going to feel like, oh, I've got the budget to buy one mic and I've got a laptop, and they often come bundled with a cable, so when we talk about accessories in the next video, you'll see that you often have to add a lot of stuff to this. These things are great for that. This one has switchable things, so I can make it stereo or just picking up mono in front, which is what it's doing right at the moment. So do consider USB mics. Go around, have a look at some reviews. They might be something that will work for you if you want a small studio setup where you're recording a single instrument at a time. They might be a really great way to start and then they also have this use for podcasting and they're very mobile as well. So that's a little bit about all those different types of mics. I hope that's been useful and interesting for you. Join me in the second video when we're gonna have a look at mic connections and how to get the sound into your equipment. Uh, do give me a like if you liked it, subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to seeing you next time.